Okay, let's start. Fred Film Radio, um, 75th edition of the Venice Film Festival. We with the team of the Mountain Filming Competition here. Welcome, Rick Alverson, director, and hey, Jeff thanks. Galtblum, one of the protagonists. I like the way you say my name, Gal Galtblum. I like Galtblum. Should I say that? that well, no, I say Goldblum, but I like Galtblum. Goldblum. Okay, well, Goldblum. I'm a Spaniard, so... Part of my English. Que tal, que tal. Muy bien, thank oh. you. So my first question is, I read you said the film was kind of a struggle for the, for the audience. They have to, like, to fight with the film. I, I hope it's a struggle. Did you conceive it like that? Like a yes, struggle? Yes, yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, I mean, we're, everything's so digestible, so consumable increasingly in our content-driven world that, uh, you know, it's all in our terms, and sure, that's great, but you get a little, you get a surplus of that in privileged societies, and, 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 and things go off the rails. Uh, I, you know, and uh, what happened to wanting to be stimulated and, and you know, I mean, uh, and moved and, and changed, you know, altered, you know, uh, uh, th these things don't dovetail well in, in consumer society, you know, <laughs> they, they don't make for good consumers, people that are, that are you know, mm -hmm. activated. So. What, Jeff, what dragged you into the film? Why did you say yes to this project? Well, his, even before he says it, before he articulates it, his, even a partial part of his treatise, which is not calculated but deeply felt and personal and from his own madness and fevered brilliance, I sensed what the opportunity was and, you know, was drawn to it like a bug to a, to a, bright light. <laughs> so, but besides that, uh, you know, the script is wonderful. But what he's saying, no, I think, Rick, am I wrong? You know more about, and he's turned me on, and taking his class has been great in these last several months, and l learning about directors and films that have inspired you. Anyway, it's been enlarging for me in every way, and I love that more than anything. I'm nothing if not a humble student. So he's a great teacher, but Rick, let me ask you this. Isn't this movie, now that I've seen it just last week, and as I think about it more, didn't Ozu, is that then his name, who did Tokyo Story, mm -hmm. when he did it, weren't people startled by that and for the first time asked to do something they hadn't, which was lean forward and get involved in it and work a little hard with the story? Doesn't this do something as revolutionary, transformational as that, per perhaps? It does, it's for me, I don't know every movie, but I felt that this is, my life has changed from having worked on it and seen it. Once. What do you think of that? Was Ozu an influence for you? I'm more Bresson. But, okay. You know, they're, 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 they're linked, obviously, inextricably, the two of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, Bresson compartmentalized bodies. And, uh, you know, people, it, there's a lot of, uh, and it, it, that violated rules. You know, it wasn't, you, you know, why are we just looking at this hand? Why are there so many doors? Why, you know, like these, these the inconsequential events and actions that became the substance of his of his filmmaking and you know it made us contend with the the material of the film in a different way and therefore walk out of the theater uh and uh, altered more you know aware uh not not necessarily of a moral message but of a of like a, a, a we have a different uh grasp on our our, our physicality you know mm -hmm. we we're 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 more functional as people and you know, uh, I, to me, cin cinema, what's left of it, has a choice whether it can be about functionality or about irrelevance. Hmm. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think that the, the movie plays between uh, uh, light and darkness, and so does your character, who is entertaining and obscure at the same time. How did you work in the double nature of your character? Uh, you're so nice. I, yeah, I agree. That was the challenge. Well, if any of that is achieved, it's all because of him. You know, I just tried to do what he was telling me to do. He had a very clear idea about what we did. You know, even when we read it. Well, I started to work on it. I'm nothing if not conscientious. And we, he was very generous. We got together for a couple of days, hours and hours and hours at a time, and went through the whole script. And I had a thousand questions because I'm kind of a yakky guy, and I had curiosity about it. And I still do. There are questions left unanswered, which is what I love about him and the movie. I've seen it, and I think I'll see it many, many more times, and will continue. It's like a poem, uh, or like a beautiful painting, I think. I don't mean to be pretentious, but uh, I'm an admirer, and it keeps doing its work on you in some strange and revolutionary way. Um, 
But anyway, what did you? What did? What was the question you were talking the about? Double the double nature. The double nature. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, my character. Yeah. Well, you know, even as described, and the character on which it's based, uh, people describe him as a kind of a showman and a charismatic, uh, you know, uh, showman, and a, a kind of an American, you know, showmaker. Mm -hmm. P.T. Barnum, you know, here's the new show in town, this lobotomy, this new medical treatment. You know, as we know, there are people who have come in and out of towns with snake oil treatments, and part of their sales uh, is, is show and uh, attention getting. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's that in the character, but there's, it's the very real decline of, the, of manliness and the American man and the American dream that is in struggling in my bosom and in the movie and I'm troubled and deeply there's pain, great pain going on in me and dark reflection. Do you happen to see any connections between that decline and the actual situation of America? Uh, yes, yeah, entirely, yeah. Uh, la la largely, possibly entirely, uh, very, very linked. I mean, we, you know, particularly the, the, the form... Not to get too academic about it, but okay. I think it's something that needs to be discussed is the form and content component. Like, we, why are we so susceptible to, you know, Russian infiltration in our elections in the States, you know? That's because we're unaware. We're, we, we, don't, we no longer have a skepticism of the delivery vehicles for the messaging. You know, we get into our hall of mirrors and Facebook and social, social media, and everything's refracted. We're constantly validated. We live in our worlds, and then, you know, it's a stew that, that, that results in, a, you know, fanatical clowns running the country, you know? And mm -hmm. so uh, uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what we have. Jeff, any thoughts on this? Yeah, well, you're talking my language, boy. Uh, <laughs> and I know why I love you more and more. Um, I don't want to make news with any uh, anything. Uh, you can, you can. Extra, extra, no, I know, I know you aren't. And yeah, in I fact, but I do. But 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 I think now more than ever, we're urgently in need of uh, our deepest humanity and sanity and uh, and uh, alertness. But I read this book I've been saying uh, called Fantasyland or How America Went Haywire, which chronicles the seeds of what we see now, which is so disturbing to many of us, uh, from the very start. 